so it's super exciting but tomorrow is the day after almost a year and a half since i signed up to octopus energy's power loop trial that we're actually going to get the stuff installed onto the house So that's right, after over a year of waiting for the power loop stuff to arrive, thanks to COVID and all sorts of other things, we're actually finally getting to the point where we can actually have the kit installed in the home. It's actually unfortunate that we didn't get it installed before COVID came out because this car has been on the driveway for most of the last year. So it would have been a great opportunity to try out the stuff. Unfortunately, UK Power Networks and some of the other partners decided that there was some additional equipment that actually needed to be manufactured specifically for my house in order to participate in the vehicle to grid trial. That equipment has also slightly complicated the installation. So let's go and have a look what that means for what's going to go on in the house. So what's been the delay then? Well, in my last video, I talked about how the problems that we were having here were all associated with the amount of power that were coming off other people's solar installations and the distance to the transformer, my local transformer here, which feeds this street and, and some of the others around here. Um, it's pretty close by. And UK power networks, from what I understand it, were concerned that this would cause uh, an excess of power, potentially, with the leaf at its full potential, pushing power back onto the grid, which could actually, uh, combined with all of the other sources of generation in this area, cause some problems for the grid infrastructure. So that was kind of point one of the learning, I guess, or you know, certainly uh, a point of learning for uh, the, the, the folks involved in the trial um, and a problem that they needed to solve to make vehicle to grid work in this situation. So from a trial perspective, you know, the team are already learning lessons. Now, the problem that that has kind of had for me is that I haven't really been involved too much in the trial because clearly we haven't had anything installed in the home. Um, it also means that this electrical installation behind me here is going to be completely bypassed by the, uh, the new technology that we need to have installed in the home. So originally, I thought that we could use the fuse board here, which is a secondary consumer unit, um, which is dedicated for the garage and the electric vehicle charger that we currently have, the Zappi. Um, and we could just come off with another uh, unit to the new charger, which is going to be this wall box quasar unit. Now, the reason we need this new charger is because the vehicle to grid technology is only supported by uh, a few chargers and it is only supported by the Chadamo connector so that connector um, that wall box uh, is you know specifically going to give us this vehicle to grid capability the zappi you know has a type 2 connector um, a type 2 standard from what i know about it doesn't support vehicle to grid um, so that's why we've got to go down that road it's also why the nissan leaf is one of the only cars that can support vehicle to grid at this time because chadamo has the most advanced vehicle to grid technology although i do know that in the roadmap for ccs there is some talk of, of of vehicle to grid which will be great because otherwise this will be just a bit of an avenue of um you know this will be a technology siding uh, because unless other things start supporting it um, we aren't going to see uh, much grid vehicle to grid technology uh, moving moving forward as uh, certainly in europe anyway ccs has become the dominant uh, standard for charging vehicles so ultimately, we're going to need a device that is going to limit the amount of power that can leave this house. Um, and they are calling this a G100 device. Um, and during the consultation that I had with the Octopus Energy uh, team that are leading this trial, we did a bit of a video conference, uh, showed them around the house virtually, um, and we set out the locations for um, all of that equipment. And the G100 device is going to go here because this is where the primary consumer unit for the house is. And just on the other side of this door 
is where the meter box is with the main fuse coming into the house. So what they're going to have to do, they're going to install this G100 device here on this wall. That is going to feed the new charger, but it's also going to take the solar generation, so they're going to have to rework the solar generation up here into the G100 unit, so that it can then measure and understand how much power is uh, coming from the solar generation, so that the overall output from this house going out to the grid is limited at a specific value that UK Power Networks are going to define uh, to Octopus Energy as part of this trial. You know, from a trial perspective, that's just complicated the whole uh, arrangement here because that means instead of coming from the consumer unit in the garage, to fairly short run to the, the, the wall box charger, we've actually got to have a cable round down this wall, out round low level underneath the, uh, you know, around the outside of the house, uh, uh, through the decking or around the decking somehow, um, and then into the garage and out onto the wall uh, beside the leaf. So it's a little bit more effort. Um, I'm sure that they didn't want to do this, but the main learning out of this is that if vehicle to grid is going to be a thing, and if solar generation, micro generation is going to be a thing, then we're going to have to see a bit of an investment in uh, the, the, the local energy grid to support energy coming back out of the grid. And if we think about the energy grid, at the moment, it's a bit like a, a you know a, a tree, a tree where you know there's a central trunk, or, uh, and then small uh, le you know small branches and, and and leaves, fingers coming off of the of the tree, and we're right at the end. We're we're on one of those very small branches, and so you know whilst the grid can support a huge amount of energy and and distribute it actually it's not designed to support huge amounts of energy coming out at the peripheries and back into the grid so local kind of reinforcement of the of the of the local grid is going to be something that might have to happen in order for this kind of technology to to be used in an unconstrained manner and obviously the unconstrained is probably the best thing because you're going to maximize the amount of energy that you can get out of uh, these vehicles so that's it, it's just about to kick off here, so we are uh, literally uh, one day away from the team turning up to install uh, this system. Um, it's going to be, uh, you know, a little bit more involved as we've said, but hopefully this is going to really kick off the trial and this is going to be our last full day uh, relying on the grid and, you know, from tomorrow at some point we will have a 40 kilowatt power wall on our driveway that we can use um, and hopefully we will see a big change in in the way that we're using energy from the grid and I'm really excited about that I hope you are so don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can stay tuned uh, for the for the next video uh, where we shall see all of that stuff get installed and get going um, on on this trial properly. So thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed it and we'll see you very shortly in the next one.